Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here. This is a devotional word for May 25th, 2024. Hope you're doing super well. In John chapter 11, we see Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. He had been dead four days when Jesus finally got to him. But so much of the story happens before that point. So let me read to you and I'll just make a few comments. John chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. His brother Lazarus was sick, therefore the sisters sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, whom you love is sick, he whom you love is sick. I love that they didn't try to tell him what to do, they just let him know, the one that you love is sick. They didn't say the one that you love is sick, so get here quick. They just believed that he would do the right thing, anticipating, of course, that he would come, and they knew that he could heal. So they just gave him the information and trusted that Jesus would do the right thing. <clears throat> when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so he, he loved this family. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. Now by this time, Lazarus had died. We're going to find that out as, as the story unfolds. But Jesus purposely delayed his departure to the place where Lazarus was because God the Father had a bigger plan than just healing or raising Lazarus from the dead. Verse 7, After this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, teacher, lately the Jews have sought to stone you, and are you going there again? We've been reading and studying and considering the opposition that Jesus had in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the central area for the spiritual life of the nation of Israel. And Jesus would go to the Temple Mount area in Jerusalem, and he would teach the people. And the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees were constantly against him. So there was a lot of opposition. The last time we saw Jesus there, they had taken up stones and wanted to stone him to death. They wanted to kill him. Jesus left there, and uh, he was in another region now. But the disciples are shocked that Jesus is going to go back there. Uh, it doesn't make sense to their logical minds. Verse 8, once again, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? They loved him. They wanted him alive. Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And sleep was the ancient euphemism for death. He's dead, but I'm going to go raise him from the dead. But it's so interesting to me that when the disciples said, why are you going back there? They wanted to kill you. And Jesus is basically saying this. Right now, I have daylight. Right now, I have time. Right now, I have life. And while I have life, nothing's going to stumble me. Nothing's going to hold me back. Nothing's going to hurt me. I have the will of my Father to carry out. And I have an assignment. And Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I always do those things that please him. So he was always receiving his direction and his commands and his trajectory of life from the Father in heaven. And so Jesus, I think, is basically telling them, I know they want to kill me, but it's daytime, and I know what I'm doing. I'm not stumbling. Jesus said, if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. So Jesus is basically saying, it's time for me to work. And while I have the opportunity to work, while I have the opportunity in this life to teach the multitudes, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. While I have this window of opportunity, I'm not going to miss it. He said, if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the, the light is not in him. There may be a double meaning there in the fact that so many of the people then and so many people now live in spiritual darkness and really don't understand what's going on. So I think there's a double meaning there. But I think the primary meaning for Jesus is Today's the day. I'm going to seize the day. I'm not going to 
put off doing what my father wants me to do because of fear. I have an assignment, and as long as I have my breath, I'm going to be serving my father in heaven. There's a parallel verse that I love uh, in the book of Acts in chapter 13, and it reads like this, and it talks about King David. It says, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, King David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was buried with his fathers. That gives me a lot of hope in my life that as long as I have life, I'm here to serve my generation. God wants to use me. If you're a Christian, God wants to use you. And he's given you gifts. He's given me gifts. I don't want to apologize for those gifts. I don't want to pretend they don't exist. I don't want to brag about them because a gift is nothing to brag about. It's something you receive. But God has gifted me. And if you're a Christian, God has gifted you. And let's serve our generation and let's walk in the time allotted that God has given us for this life and let's not be held back by fear. <clears throat> fear and faith are mutually exclusive in the Christian life. And so I want to encourage you. Nothing can touch you until the day that God's going to take you home. And he may take you home through the rapture of the church. He may take you home through what it would be considered a natural illness. It may be, unfortunately, by the hands of men or some other way. But it doesn't really matter. While it's day, walk in the work that God has given you. Serve your generation. And then when your service is up, the Lord's going to put you to sleep. And you're going to take your last breath on earth and your first breath in heaven and see the face of Jesus Christ. So that's what Jesus is talking about. I don't need to be afraid of those guys that want to kill me. I know that they do, but I'm walking in the light. I know what I'm doing, and there's only 12 hours in a day, and I'm going to use every one of them every last minute until it's time for me to leave. So some things to think about. Thanks for watching.